exposed my wife's secret platonic FWB setup in front of all her friends' husbands, left everyone speechless. I need to know if I am being paranoid or not. I, Ali, 38 male am on a camping, hiking trip right now with my wife, Liv, 36 female, three other married couples, Dom and Kate, Sean and Sarah, Bill and Miranda, and the wife's longtime friend, Ian, 38 male and his boyfriend, Odie, his real name is Orlando, so no he wasn't named after the dog from Garfield. We are all between our mid-30s and very early 40s in age. We are all outdoor enthusiasts and have wanted to do this hike for some time. We are camping at night and hiking during the day. Everything was fine. Then in the early evening of the third day of our eight-day hike, we stopped to camp. My wife and I decided to venture out and just check out some of the area around our campsite. We came across a small waterfall that fed the stream that largely wound near the trail we've been hiking. It was maybe five feet high and poured onto mostly hard rocks below. My wife said she really wanted to rinse off in the stream and waterfall but didn't want to soak her clothes. I said go for it. We aren't too far off from the others but this spot is fairly secluded. If you made it quick you could be in and out in no time. She did just that, maybe lingered for a second, then stepped out and tried to air dry mostly while drying off best she could with a small hand towel we had on us. After slipping her shorts and underwear back on in one move, Ian walked up on us from around a few trees. My wife was still completely topless. This is where it got weird. Neither of them reacted. She just continued nonchalantly getting dressed and he just kept walking up like he had seen these specific balloons a hundred times. He told us something I can't even remember at this point that Dom wanted us to know. My wife and him made some idle small talk, then we all made our way back to the camp. It's day 5 now. The hike trail runs into a small town at this point, and there is a small local inn that caters to the hiking crowd. We had it planned out to spend this night here, let everyone have a nice recovery night, restock some supplies, etc. I have been dwelling on what happened by the waterfall for two days now. I'm doing my best to hide it, but my wife asked me this morning why I was so quiet yesterday. I just said I was tired, but really I can't shake the thought that something has happened between them before. I would be less suspicious but I know Ian is bi, not gay. I have known this man for about eight years now, and would consider him a friend now as well. Us husbands and Odie are all the outsiders here. All four wives and Ian have been friends since college. I have asked my wife in the past if she ever dated Ian and she always has said no. I have asked if Ian and any of the other women in the group were ever a couple and she said no to that as well. I might just be paranoid, but it was just so familiar the way they interacted while she was still topless. Normally, my wife is pretty reserved about her body, so to not react at all to his approach seemed odd. I really have no reason to believe anything wrong is going on. Although, I am starting to wonder if there is more to their past than just friends. Am I being paranoid? Is this a red flag? I am really trying to not jump to conclusions. Update. It's very early here in the morning of day 6. To give you all an update, I talked to my wife, live about what happened at the waterfall. I wanted to do it while we still had some privacy before we got on the trail again, and I'm glad I did. I started it off as non-confrontational as I could. Just stating that it seemed a little weird that she wasn't alarmed by his presence even though she was topless. Had she responded any other way I probably would have dropped it. But she got very defensive immediately. Is that why you have been moody? It's not a big deal. Everyone has seen balloons before even Ian. You need to grow up. This was really alarming to me. She doesn't normally react aggressively unless she feels guilty about something. I pressed further, and she got more reactionary and defensive. She was trying to deflect and downplay every question I asked, with a little minor gaslighting in there. I finally had my fill of this and told her, either let me know what's going on, or I'm going to confront Ian, and you know he won't lie. This is where Liv admitted that her and Ian had a past sensual relationship. I grew angry and asked why she lied to me when I've asked in the past. She said she didn't lie, they never dated, it was just a FWB situation right before we went official. When official, I asked her in a very surprised and triggered tone, so you were effing him when we first started dating. She snapped back at me, you don't have to be so vulgar, I don't want to talk about this right now can't we have this conversation when the trip is over. I fired back, absolutely not, either you tell me everything now or I'm going to start interrogating your friends. I think she could see the sincerity in my threats, and she just let the whole truth flow out. The first part I knew, she had a series of unfortunate relationship and dating experiences. Liv had attributed a lot of this to not getting to know the other person before jumping into bed with them. When we started to date she asked if we could take things slow. I had agreed because I too was looking for the special someone, and in this case I was very interested in Liv. She did say when we first started dating that I was free to date others until we decided to be official. 
I told her I would not be doing that, I'm not interested in dating around, and wanted to focus on one relationship at a time. She told me then that made her really happy. She then went on to reveal things about her and her friends group that will shake everyone if they come to light. Apparently, Liv, Kate, Miranda, and Sarah all had similar FWB situations with Ian while dating their current husbands. So shortly after college, Kate, who is married to Dom, was fed up with dating, she kept picking the wrong guys. In the interim, her and Ian became FWBs. When she met Dom, she asked to take things slow and really get to know each other before making things physical. Kate said it was possible to do this because she was still sleeping with Ian. Thus, she was satisfying her physical needs which allowed her to focus on the emotional side with Dom. Ian was good with this arrangement and let her know this was just about finding her special someone. They would talk about Dom and sleep together. Once Kate felt she really had met the one, they ended the FWB and she began her physical relationship with Dom. And they ultimately did marry. Kate after this told the women all about this. Over the years each of them has used Ian as their surrogate cock while searching for the one. I am just the most recent in this whole thing. I asked my wife to explain the details of her parts. The other women's marriages are their own. But how did this play out for her? She told me after her previous boyfriend turned out to have way too many narcissistic traits. She had enough and really wanted to meet a good guy, I guess that was me. She talked to Ian about helping the way he had with the other three. He said he would help for sure and that this whole thing is about finding her a life partner. I believe his sincerity in all this. He is a free spirit, kind of person I've had deep conversations with, kind of person who will help anyone with anything. We play golf together, he's been in my life since I started dating Liv, I didn't realize how involved obviously. Basically he would provide an ear to listen, give advice, talk through her feelings, and F her so she could handle holding out until she felt we'd gotten to know each other. I literally felt like throwing up, feel like our relationship was a whole lie. Despite this I kept the pain shopping going. I asked her when she stopped. She said when we went official. I told her I felt like we were official when we agreed to date, so when was this for her? She said, we were dating, that doesn't make two people officially a couple, the night I asked you to commit to me. And we had SX for the first time. Ian and I have been nothing but 100% platonic friends since that night. I pointed out that was 7 months into dating. You were effing him for 7 months, the whole 7 months. She got quiet and I knew the answer. I said so let me get this straight. I would pick you up for a date. We would go out and have a wonderful time. Hold hands, cuddle, kiss, make out. Then I'd drop you off, you'd meet up with Ian, then eff and talk about how great of guy I am. She spit back, don't make it sound so dirty. I was appalled. I wanted to run, but I've walked myself to the middle of effing nowhere and have no way back other than to keep waking forward. In hindsight, I'm wishing I had just done that. Instead, I decided to press on for more details. I asked her, when you say you slept together, you mean you used him just to get yourself off or you mean you did all the positions, foreplay, kinky things and such that we do. She got really quiet. I calmly said, you need answer my questions, I need to know, and I'm going to find out whether it's from you or one of them. And with that I pointed in the direction of the door that lead to others' rooms. She very quietly said, all, even more than with you. The room was spinning at this point, yet I still asked the worst question, when? When was the last time? She replied the night before. The night before our first time. I have never wanted to get away from someone more in that moment. But I just sat there and sulked, she tried to comfort me and I told her to get away. I needed time. I had nowhere to go so, I just pulled a few blankets and pillows onto the floor at the foot of the bed. I passed out for a few hours, but I'm up now, posting this update. I want to just march right out of here but at the end of this trail is a 12 passenger van I don't have the keys for. I'll have to stay with these people for two and half more days and another half day drive back. I don't know what to do, part of me can kind of see the logic, but mostly I'm just hurt and feel like our whole relationship is just a long con on me, I feel settled for, a silver medal. I also have an overwhelming urge to bring this to light in front of everyone. All of these other guys it was the same thing. We're all just here under false pretenses. I don't know what to do, I've got about an hour before everyone's up, then I'll have to face Ian and my wife. Am I overreacting? Is this marriage worth saving? I don't see how we go back. Update, I am back in the comfort of my own home. Unfortunately, I and several others may be staring down the barrel of divorce. I was able to keep it together for the most part on day 6. Although I'm sure everyone knew something was wrong with me. I was very quiet and kept trying to push the pace to get back to the van. I assume at lunch time was when Liv pulled Ian aside and filled him in on what I knew. At that point, Ian started trying to buddy up to me and talk. Even though I told him to leave me be. 
he persisted a few more times, until I finally snapped and told him to drop it in very assertive way. Liv then intervened and they both got the hint I needed more time to process. The next 24 hours went smooth enough, everyone just kind of left me alone. However, after snapping at him, Ian had a total demeanor change. He went from his usual laid-back self to somewhat standoffish with everyone. Occasionally, he would make little passive-aggressive comments. Nothing too obvious but definitely directed at me. We hit the night of the seventh day and set up camp. I had relaxed a little and was being a bit more social with everyone. We were sitting around the campfire and cooking up the last of our foods. People were just talking, joking, telling stories. Billy told everyone a long embarrassing story about himself from high school. It's a pretty funny story about him and his first girlfriend, and in it he acts like a pretty big idiot. When he was done he made some comment like, I still can't believe I was ever that dumb, I still cringe thinking about it. After he said that, Ian popped off, well at least you grew, some people never man up and get over the past. He then looked right at me with the most condescending look. In that moment I had an out-of-body experience, I saw only red, the filter was gone. Reason was gone, it was on. You know Ian you're right, sometimes we just got to man up and face the past head on. At this point Liv tried interrupting but I completely ignored her. How about we address the fact you used to F all our wives while we were dating? Even the insects got quiet when I said that. Oh fellas, did you not know either? Yeah. While they were holding out on us to build a connection, I totally air quoted our future wives were using old Ian here as their human dildo. Dom and Billy looked confused and angry. Sean had a look on his face like he just walked in on his grandma am baiting. Just total train wreck shock. I wasn't done though. I turned to Dom. It was Kate that pioneered this amazing plan. She figured out the key to building a lasting relationship was to take things slow, get to know each other before jumping into bed. All you need to handle the urges is a bestie willing to blow your back out when you come home from your dates all hot and bothered. Dom jumped in at this point, F you, Ali, how do you know this? Oh I just found out two days ago that when I'd take Liv out for shots that wasn't going to be the only thing she was swallowing that night. At this point Liv lost it and she started screaming at me, why are you effing doing this, you don't need. But she got cut off when Sean popped up, it's true, it's all true. Everyone got quiet and looked at him. I've known since we were dating. I didn't find out it was everyone else too, until after we were married. I'm sorry Ellie. You I could have warned. Billy I swear I didn't know it was you two back then. Billy had this immense look of dread on his face. Sean, we used to double date Miranda and Sarah. A couple times we went out and then dropped them off at Ian's afterwards. Does that? Does that mean they? Sean just looked at him and nodded. I immediately turned to Ian. Two at once, you effing hound dog you. Then I howled like a wolf, which in hindsight is really embarrassing but at the time I thought was hilarious. Arguments were breaking out between the couples all over when an audible gasp and whimper drew everyone's attention. Odie was sitting there with heavy tears rolling down his face. He looked at Ian, lies, more lies, it never ends, no matter what I forgive, no matter how many times I take you back, you always do this to me. He then slapped him and turned and took off down the trail. Ian ran after him. The other three couples grumbled under their breaths at each other, then each started off in separate directions. I stood by the fire feeling triumphant. Liv walked up to me and said, I hope you're happy. I quickly looked her in the eye and said, I've never been more effing happy with myself in my whole life. I'm 80 over 20 for divorce right now. I recommend leaving me be until we are home, unpacked, showered and fed, because the only thing you are going to accomplish before then is getting me turned that to 100. At that point she turned and went into our tent. The next day was the most awkward seven hours of my life. Between the morning pack up, hike to the van, loading up and 4.5 hour drive home maybe 19 words were said in total. I'm sitting in my bathroom freshly showered. I'm going to go eat some chicken nugs, drink three Dr. Peppers, and then talk to my wife. I don't know where we are going from here, or where anyone else is going to end up, but I know it's not going to be pretty any which way. Update. It's been four weeks since we got back from the trip. Everything, everywhere has seemingly imploded. Dom and Kate are getting a divorce. They've been together the longest of all of us couples and have a 10-year-old son. Dom took the revelation extremely hard. On top of them being together the longest, he had the longest courting period at 9 months. It's been a hard pill for him to swallow because he recalls they didn't really take the step to being intimate until he started to question whether he wanted to stay in the relationship. Now that he knows the truth, no matter what Kate tells him he will always believe the time was so long because she didn't want to stop being with Ian. I sat down with Sean and had a few beers one night. We have been pretty good friends over the years, even if we only met through our wives. Sean said Sarah had been upfront with him. 
When they started dating she said she wanted to wait at least three months before making love, but also told him she would still be meeting with her FWB. Sean really liked her, but also informed her that he was only casually dating until he knew and Sarah said she was fine with that as well. So unlike the rest of us dolts, Sean was also getting his during this time. Granted he was the only one of us gifted transparent choice. Two weeks before the three months was up, and after a few double dates with Billy and Miranda, Sean realized he was falling for Sarah, and said he wanted her exclusively. She scrapped the three month minimum and they were intimate the first time that very night, and have never looked back. Both made each other completely aware of the other's exploits during this period immediately. The honesty seems to have gone a long way. As Sean told me they did have a small fight but it was only because Sarah thought they should have excused themselves from the whole campfire fiasco instead of chiming in at all. All in all they are doing well as a couple. Thanks to Sean I also have an update on Billy and Miranda. They are in the early stages of a reconciliation. Billy is obviously and justly having a difficult time. He feels that she cheated, and is using semantics to justify it. They dated for six months before going official. They have three kids under the age of seven so they both feel like they have to try and make it work for the kids. Billy's biggest struggle is distinctly remembering dropping off Miranda and Sarah at Ian's on two separate occasions. Knowing she went out with him while having a threesome plan has him a shell of his former self. Apparently Miranda has tried to tell him that only one of those times did they do anything, and it wasn't really threesome, more like a reverse train. Again, semantics to justify. Sean tells me that Miranda is telling the truth as Sarah was the other party in this and confirmed it wasn't a real three-way. But honestly, does that really matter? Ian reached out to me to apologize, I told him to F himself and then blocked him. Cody reached out as well, I guess my revelation was the last straw. We actually converse quite a bit over the course of a week even though we were only really friendly acquaintances before. Turns out Ian and Odie have been on again off again for 15 years. While Ian portrays this laid back, selfless image everywhere he goes, Odie knows him to be extremely self-centered and manipulative. He often breaks up with Odie for short periods of time, or says they're on a break, so he can do what he wants because he's not a cheater, only to come crawling back once he's had his fun. Thinking back, Odie realizes that at least two of these breaks coincide with these dating setups. However, Odie feels the worst for tolerating it for so long and allowing Ian chance after chance. He says this was it. He's moving back to Santa Barbara and leaving Ian, and the cold sass Midwest behind for good. As for me and Liv, we had the longest conversation despite being exhausted upon returning from the hike. I told her up front I wasn't interested in arguing or debating or anything like that. I told her tell me everything you want to tell me, I won't interrupt, I won't ask questions until you're done. Then I want the exact same courtesy. She agreed. It was all apologize and justify. She would admit it was wrong to do, then give a reason why it was okay, or point to a positive outcome. She did express that she was very hurt and upset with how I went off at the campsite, but did acknowledge that Ian deserved just as much blame, since he wouldn't stop poking the bear. When she was done she asked if I had any questions for her and I said no. I then began. I told her our entire relationship is built on false pretenses. I acknowledged the logical part of my brain can see where she was coming from and why she tried the whole ENFWB thing. Your three best friends did this and all landed great husbands before you. But on some level all four of you had to know it was wrong to start a relationship like this. I told her that it was extremely hurtful to know that she was sleeping with someone else, and I believe it slowed the natural progress of our relationship. It has fundamentally changed my memories of our early life together. I asked her do you remember it about 4, 4.5 months into our relationship we had that amazing day. We spent the whole day together. It ended with us back on my couch. We were kissing, your shirt was off, I was rubbing you over your shorts, it was getting pretty hot, and you stopped, you apologized, said you really really wanted to, but just wasn't quite ready, wanted to be absolutely 100%. I said it was okay, gave you all the reverences, you looked at me lovingly, gave me a passionate kiss before you left. I can only guess you left my place and went to Ian's. She sat there, tears rolling down her face, I said, am I right? She just nodded. I continued, I put that energy into you, you chose not to give it back to me, but to give it to someone else. I could maybe get over this if the thing with him had ended in the first or second month when we were more casual. But we were spending a lot of time together after that, and you kept it up with him all the way until the day before. You liked having us both, you did whatever mental gymnastics you needed to justify it to yourself. I told her this last part you may not even realize is actually the worst part of it all to me. Finding out that you were so much more adventurous and exciting with him is like a knife in the heart. 
it makes me feel like second best, like a retirement plan, settled for, that I am just good enough. She interjected there and began telling me no, it's not like that, she loves me. He was just sx, it wasn't real, that's how it is when they don't matter, it's easier to be loose and wild then, and so on. I waited for her to finish, then just said, remember, we agreed it was my turn to talk. Afterwards, I said, I understand that's your point of view, but that is not my point of view. As your husband I feel like it's my duty to give you the most and the best of my energy. My emotional energy, my physical energy, my mental energy, my sensual energy, and so on. I feel I have done that over these eight years. I think you have given me your best in some areas, but I now know I haven't gotten your best in some also. And as a man I must admit that sensual energy is very important to me. To know that I wasn't worthy of all your sensual energy, that you didn't trust me with that. It's the deciding factor, I do not think I can come back from this, and intend to file for divorce. The scene got messy from there, and she began to cry heavy and beg, offer herself, plead with me to start over. I ended up removing myself from the situation. Later, she made a point that we are just in an emotional place right now and I need to give this some time. This did give me some pause, I agreed to her term that we give it three weeks. Like I said it's been four now and my feelings haven't changed. We met with a mutual divorce lawyer who will represent us both. No kids involved, and we both want to drop the house so it was a smooth initial meeting. She has been extremely depressed and so have I, but this is for the best. Sometimes things just don't work out. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you really like our videos, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.